Yo, what's up guys? Mike here, coming at you from the Mushroom Farm, and I got a great video for you guys today. So today we're going to talk about Horisium coralloides, or the coral tooth mushroom, alright? Now this mushroom is a specimen. I've been growing these on my farm for many years now. We're going to talk about why you might want to grow it, the growing conditions, what it tastes like, some of the problems you might have with it, and just overall why it's awesome. But anyway, if you're new to this channel and you're just now tuning in, my name is Mike. I'm a mushroom farmer. I've been farming gourmet mushrooms nine years full time. Here's just a few shots of some of my recent grows and some of my harvest over the years. But I basically grow all these mushrooms here on my farm and I sell them at farmer's markets and to high-end restaurants. We're actually standing here in my brand new mushroom farm that I built myself in Western Colorado. I'm doing daily uploads on this channel. We have over 250 videos on mushroom and farming. So if you're into mushrooms and farming, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future. But I always got another good video coming. We have a Black Friday sale still going on right now. You can check down in the description box below, head over to the website. You can use the code MESA25 to get 25% off anything on my website. Got some great deals on liquid cultures right now. Awesome little master packs. If you want to grow the Horisium Coralloides, I've got the Horisium Coralloides by itself and in several different packs. So check that out. But anyway, on to today's video, okay? Horisium Coralloides. I made some notes for this video too. Now, I just want to say too, before we even get into this, Horisium Coralloides, I've been cultivating this mushroom about six years, and it is when I don't, I don't really have a favorite mushroom, I've talked about that before, but this is one of, one of my favorites to grow. Absolutely, like when I first got into this, I went down the lion's mane rabbit hole like many people, and I just wanted to try other Horisiums. I found out, hey, I really like to grow Horisiums. Lion's mane, it, it is a Horisium. Horisium coralloides or the coral, coral tooth that is in the same genus of Horisium. So I wanted to kind of delve down that rabbit hole a little bit and just see what Horisium was all about, all right? And one thing that was really cool when I started growing it, I found out it was neuroregenerative, okay? So if you're wondering what are one of the reasons you might want to grow it, number one, I'm going to say it's neuroregenerative. So just like lion's mane, super good for brain health. So whether you're growing it for yourself and you just want something healthy to eat or you're wanting to sell it at a farmer's market, there's definitely good neuroregenerative properties to this mushroom. It actually contains what's called coralicins in it. Right when I started growing it, actually right the year before I started growing this mushroom, a study came out and I, I believe the study came out in like 2016 and the coralicin was discovered in the Horisium coralloides and basically that is one of the neuroregenerative compounds that's in it so I thought that was just super cool and I was like wow so I'm growing lion's mane I'm growing this coral tooth mushroom both neuroregenerative but they have different neuroregenerative compounds so they can work synergistically in our bodies actually as far as uh, brain health is concerned so I thought that was just a really cool reason why I should be cultivating it way back when I started doing it. And then also the looks, okay, I mean, just look at the Horisium Coralloides, this thing looks amazing. And me being a farmer's market seller, basically having all my mushrooms out in front of me on a table, displaying them, trying to create this awesome art display of mushrooms at the farmer's market, the Horisium Coralloides fits the bill big time, okay, it has this just awesome coral-like shape, especially when you combine it with oyster mushrooms. I've had so many people over the years just walk up to my stand, especially if, if they're not super well versed in mushrooms, they might be looking at it and they'll, they'll do a double take too. They're like, what is this? Are these seashells? And then I'll be like, oh no, they're mushrooms. And they'll look and they're like, they are mushrooms. And then it gets people really excited because they just realize it's like, this is some really crazy far out space looking, coral looking mushroom. So the looks draw people in. That's really a big part about it. Now another cool reason you might want to grow the Horisium Coralloides is the flavor, okay? So this mushroom has a super cool flavor to it, similar to lion's mane because it is in the Horisium genus. It has this lobster or crab meat like flavor actually. So if you want to substitute lobster or crab in a meal with mushrooms, Horisium Coralloides or the coral tooth is a great choice. Now I want to tell you some key differences with the flavor with this mushroom compared to lion's mane. This might be helpful for you cooking or it might be helpful if you're going to sell it to a customer or a chef, alright? So check this out. If you've ever had a lion's mane and it's had like a slight bitter flavor to it, Horisium Coralloides just never gets that, okay? So it has that nice, subtle, mild, sweet, crab-like flavor, but it never develops that bitter that the lion's mane or the Horisium arenaceus can develop, all right? So if you wanna have like a strong selling point to this mushroom and you may have heard someone doesn't like lion's mane because it has like a bitter note to it, 
go ahead and try to talk to them about this Hericium Corolloides. They may be very interested in this. And uh, we're going to keep this video basically about Hericium Corolloides, but I want to say another mushroom in the Hericium family that I do sell and grow here on my farm is the Hericium Americanum, or the bear's head mushroom, but that's another one that does not have that bitter note at all. So that's just another cool little fun fact about Hericium Corolloides. Okay, so we got looks, neuroregenerative, flavor, these are all cool. Another big strong point for me wanting to grow it on my farm is the fact that it's like a high volume mushroom, okay? So just, I mean, look how big those clusters get. So when I'm actually picking the mushrooms, putting them in my boxes, taking them to the farmer's market and all that, basically for every actual mushroom that I pick from every single block here on my farm, you just get a high volume of mushrooms. And I don't sell my mushrooms by weight at the farmer's market, actually. I sell by volume and just try to create like an awesome display. So for a guy like me, like I said before, this fits the bill perfectly for the farmer's market. It has that awesome look to it, and yet it's also voluminous. So that's another big pro for me. Now I wanna say like as far as difficulty of cultivation, let's talk about that a little bit. I wouldn't really call this mushroom super easy, but it's not super hard either. This is more so like I'd say, easy to intermediate kind of right in that zone i feel like if anyone can cultivate a lion's mane mushroom you can cultivate hericium corolloides you just got to have your grow room a little more dialed in and i'll kind of talk about some of the nuance when it comes to growing that when i get into the growing section but i'll say overall it's an easy to intermediate mushroom for you to grow okay so i was talking about flavors it tastes like lobster or crab meat what are some of the ways i like to cook it I've got a few things right here. So number one, like always, a simple saute. If you just do a simple saute with a little bit of butter, maybe a little bit of garlic, it has that awesome flavor. It really, the butter just pairs well with that lobster slash crab meat flavor. Another like cool one that I've done is crab bisque. I've made like an imitation crab bisque. That was a pretty cool one that worked well. One thing that I did recently this last year that I'm super proud of and I'm going to have to make a video for this channel I made lion's mane crab rangoon, okay, and they were awesome. They turned out just phenomenal. And I just want to say I have not tried the Hericium corolloides with the, the crab rangoon yet, my mushroom crab rangoon, but the Hericium corolloides would be the perfect substitute for crab in a crab rangoon. So just like I did the lion's mane crab rangoon, you could potentially use Hericium corolloides, and I would totally recommend it. Another cool thing that I have done before is I've fried them, like I talked about with some of the oyster mushrooms, just battering and frying them. So these Hericium corolloides, I've kind of fried them like little fritters, and I've also taken those and torn those and put those in a salad and kind of like topped the salad with it. That was pretty sweet. And I'll also say, even like for salads, I've totally just sauteed the Hericium corolloides, put that in a salad. That was good. I've had a lot of people tell me they like to saute and put it on pizza. That's also a pretty solid choice, but Overall, it has that crab meat slash lobster flavor, and like I said, it never has that bitter that lion's mane gets, so if you want that sweet, subtle crab meat flavor, cook with the Hericium corolloides. All right, so what's it take to grow a Hericium corolloides, man? Like I said, it is super similar to lion's mane, all right? Now, I'm gonna talk to you guys kind of about like the incubation period all the way through the fruiting period till we get into the grow room, and then I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons about growing it in a grow room, and um, like, you know, some of the nuance that comes along with growing the Hericium corolloides. So we're gonna cover all that. Now I'll say as far as inoculating them, I just inoculate them with grain spawn, just like I do lion's mane. The incubation period is about two to three weeks at 60 to 7 degrees, 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, all right? So what I basically like to do is I'll inoculate the blocks, it will start to colonize the block kind of wispy like like the lion's mane now my strain it actually will develop like these really like thick patches of mycelium on the block what i really like to do it's usually right in between the two to three week zone you'll see the block getting really dense white okay and you'll see like these dense patches starting to form on it and that's basically where it's wanting to pin it's wanting to fruit where you see those super dense patches of mycelium so anyway I like to wait till the block is like totally covered with that dense mycelium. Then what I do is I take it and I make one diagonal slice down the side of the block and I just place it on my grow room shelf, okay? Now I want to talk about top fruiting versus side fruiting and this and that. Me personally, I prefer a side fruit just because I like the aesthetics 
of the Herisium corolloides side fruited. One of the main reasons why I even do grow this mushroom, like I said, is the looks. So when it comes to the looks, I just prefer the way it looks so much more side fruited compared to top fruited. Now, there are some pros and cons to this, okay? So like I said, I think no matter what, you get a better looking mushroom if you do a side fruit. What a top fruit will do, it'll just make it where the mushroom is not likely to fall off the block, where it gets too big and too heavy, and it actually rips off the block. I've seen other growers have like a whole wall of Herisium corolloides fall down. I've actually never had it happen. I have had some get so big that they have fallen off the block, but overall, it doesn't happen that frequently. You just have to keep an eye on them. If you're picking them at the optimal time, you really won't have an issue. If you push it to the limits, if you are pushing it to the limits, Definitely just keep checking your grow, okay? Because you might have one tear off. They get that heavy, all right? But if you do a top fruit, it'll never tear off the block. It'll just always kind of sit on top. But I don't think it just grows as good, okay? I think it actually grows better as a side fruit. And I think the looks are better in general as a side fruit. But anyway, you guys can do whatever you want. There is no right or wrong way to do that. I just prefer my side fruits with my Herisium corolloides. Um, growing conditions, okay? The temperature. This has a really wide range, okay? So. You can fruit this as low as 40 degrees up into the 80s, similar to lion's mane. Now, in the lower temperatures, you're gonna have a little slower growth. In the higher temperatures, it's gonna be a little faster growth. You might have problems with bacteria though once you get beyond like 75. So I always say kind of watch that. Your primo sweet spot, like always, is about 65 degrees. So if you can keep your grow room in between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, you're gonna have a really good growing environment for the Herisium corolloides. Okay. Humidity and lighting, this is gonna be like pretty standard, kind of like what we always talk about for our normal gourmet mushrooms. I like to keep my grow room in between about 85 and 90% relative humidity. So you're gonna to wanna to keep your humidity right in that zone. Now I will say, this Herisium corolloides, it's tricky because you got those like small little coral like structures coming off there. So what I watch for here, just me being out in like a high desert region in Western Colorado, if my grow room gets dry at all, if the humidifiers would shut off at all, those little tips can like slightly dry out and guys, the grow just goes to crap, man. So that's it. like when I say there's some tricks to it, this would be one of the one reasons why I would put it up a little more closer to that intermediate range. With lion's mane, you have like a little bit of like a cushion to it uh, messing up with the humidity just because it's like a big dense ball like mushroom coming off a block but like the Herisium corolloides coming off like these tentacle looking coral structures they can dry out a whole lot easier if you have like a slight dry spill in your grow room so kind of be aware of that just make sure your humidity is dialed in as long as your humidity is dialed in you're not going to have any problems with it but I will say if you start to get some drying on the tips, you may be better off just picking that mushroom as is because it's not gonna mature properly. So that is one thing you need to be aware about about it. And now as far as like time in the grow room, how long do you, does the Herisium corolloides actually take in your grow room? Typically in between about 10 to 14 days from when you actually slice it open, as long as your grow room is dialed in, it's gonna finish off. It pretty much finishes off right around that like 12, 10 to 12 day zone. I should actually say like 11 to 12 day zone. And lion's mane is typically, like I say, like a day or two after my Herisium corolloides crop. Like if I cut open a, this is actually kind of a cool little thing. If you cut open a bear's head bag, Herisium americanum, a coral tooth bag, Herisium corolloides, and then a lion's mane bag, Herisium arenaceus, all on the same day, you cut them open all on the same day, usually the bear's head is gonna win, coral tooth is gonna be number two finishing off, and then lion's mane is gonna be the slowest to finish. So that's just kind of a cool little tip you might wanna keep in mind if you're trying to time your blocks for like a certain event or a market, but that's one thing that I've pretty much seen a correlation with over the years that Herisium corolloides is just correlation corolloides, oh boy. Um, Herisium corolloides is just a little faster growing than a lion's mane mushroom. Okay, so optimal time to pick, all right? When should you pick this? And what I basically wanna tell you is wait till it is fully formed up in that coral-like structure and you wanna pick them when they are pure white. If you start to see any yellowing whatsoever, pick it immediately. Like I said, it could be drying out or it could just reach maturity. When they do reach full maturity, they will start to get like this off-white type of yellow look to them. And if you see that though, 
you need to get it right away because if it goes any longer, the shelf life decreases dramatically, okay? So after you got a few grows under your belt and you know about how big your heresium coralloides are getting, you wanna snag them right when they get to about the biggest size they can when they're pure white. And if you do this, they'll last in refrigeration, like two weeks under refrigeration has a really good shelf life. But if you let it go too long, that shelf life is going to be dramatically decreased. So it's definitely something to keep in mind when you're trying to figure about when you're trying to figure out when to pick your heresium coralloides. Okay, now some of the cons to growing this mushroom. Number one, like I said, you gotta watch it the, with the whole thing with the picking window. You gotta nail that because otherwise the shelf life does go down a little bit. I also wanna say this mushroom is kind of like a little more of a fragile mushroom, all right? You gotta be careful when you're picking them so they don't fall apart on you or something like that. Or even like when you're boxing them up, you don't wanna smash them or anything like that. They're just a little more brittle and they can fall apart a little easier. So be a little more careful and cautious with your heresium coralloides, but still no reason not to grow it, all right? Still definitely grow your heresium coralloides. One of my favorites to grow. And um, as far as any other cons, well, the only, the only other really con that comes to mind, and it's more so just a nuance with the growing, when it is in incubation, okay, that incubation window that I talked about, you want to wait till it is fully colonized and it's getting kind of like those really white, dense patches on it. Okay, so if you go before then, you might not get a good enough yield where you're happy with it. And if you go too long, all right, it just grows funny and you might have like weird bacterial problems or something like that too. I think it just increases the odds of that happening. So that's just another thing to keep in mind after you get a couple grows under your belt just learn how to read that mycelium as it's growing and then you'll know exactly when the perfect time is to cut it but I like to wait until you can tell the block is fully colonized and then you see these dense patches starting to form all over the block and that's just an indicator that it is trying to pin and that sucker wants to fruit all right so those are just a couple things about like indoor growing of heresium coralloides I want to say too if you want to try like an outdoor slash perma permaculture type setup where you're growing this mushroom on logs or totems this mushroom is also applicable to logs and totems. You can also find this mushroom just fruiting out in the wild on a log. I've found this mushroom several times out in the wild myself, so you may spot it when you're out on a hike one day or something like that. Like I said, it's pretty easy to identify. It's gonna be looking like a big hunk of coral on a log, and um, but you could grow them outdoors too if you chose to grow them outdoors. I wanna say though, if you guys got like any questions about anything I went over today about the heresium coralloides or just something I didn't cover and you want to hear it, just be sure to drop it down below in that comment section and I'll go back and I'll answer all your questions. If you guys have any suggested videos, also be sure to drop that down below in the comment section. I really enjoy making videos for all you guys and everything like that. And also remember, if you want to grow the heresium coralloides yourself, head over to my website. We have the Black Friday sale going on right now and that's going to be running until December 5th all right and uh, you can purchase all day December 5th and then after that the prices go back to normal but we have the heresium coralloides on the website use code MESA25 for 25% off your order but anyway guys hope you found this video helpful and informative if you did please drop this video a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but that's all I got for you on this one catch you guys on